Howdy, my friends. For Black History Month, we were reading a story called The Drinking Gourd. It is about how enslaved people used the stars to navigate at night and find their way to places where they could leave um, full and whole lives as families. So we're going to have an opportunity to make our own freedom scene. Um, in the scene, there's a black background. I use scraps of blue and brown paper and scraps of black paper. I also poked holes with a pencil and I used white string, your string doesn't need to look like my string, to weave in and out of these holes and make a pattern that you may recognize, the pattern of the Big Dipper, otherwise known at the time as the drinking cord. And if you would excuse all my classroom sounds, this is just how it is all day. <laughs> I got fifth graders above my head and they are fidgety. So materials. I have black paper. I have different sizes. I'm going to be tearing some of this paper. So as long as you have some construction paper with some nice dark colors, you're good to go. You may want to change up the colors. You want to use a dark blue background. You may want to use a dark purple background. Anything for you that looks like the night sky. And as far as these colors on the ground go, you want to use kind of dark colors because it is a nighttime scene. That's why I chose black and brown and blue. Blue representing the water um, at the time that people were um, enslaved in this country. If you crossed over certain geographic barriers, then you may be able to maintain your freedom. So one of those barriers were, was the Ohio River, and that's why I added this watery strip. I remember the first time my mother and my sister and I crossed the Ohio River by car on a trip when I was a teenager, and we cheered and cried a little because of the deep significance that that body of water had for our recent ancestors. So that's why I added this blue strip. Let's get started. You'll see in my original, I have some nice strips on the bottom. So let's make some strips for our landscape's bottom. See this nice blue strip? I'm just going to start at one end and tear all the way down. Okay. Place it on your paper where you think it's going to look good. There is no perfect way to do this, Wildcats. Everyone's is going to look different and special. I'm going to use this bottom again. I think I want this one to be a little bit more ragged, maybe like reminiscent of, of bumps or hills. And place it down there. I like the way that that looks, but I don't like this corner hanging off because that's kind of odd. So what I'm going to do is kind of tear it just a little bit more so that it, it meets more naturally. Okay, that's more how earth looks, right? Doesn't earth kind of taper down in that nice ragged look? So I fit my pages on my paper. I feel pretty good about those. I'm going to go ahead and glue them. And I'm not going to glue them all the way top to bottom because I want the opportunity to put in some trees. Okay, so I'm not going to put a whole ton of glue. You should have glue stick in your art kit. And again, the reason I'm not putting glue all over the strip and I'm focusing on the bottom of the strip is so that I can add different things like trees. But I think adding trees to your composition is going to give it a little depth. Just like real life, we understand that real life overlaps, right? Some trees are growing in front of other trees, so I want to give that overlapping opportunity. I have some nice black pieces of paper that I want to use for my trees. So I'm going to fold those in half because we know artists that that's the easiest way to make a shape symmetric. And I'm just going to kind of tear in like a, a rough triangular sort of pattern. And now I have a tree-like shape. I know this has a little bump on top. I'm not sure if I like that, so I'm just going to tear it straight up. There we go. Here's a tree shape. So again, it doesn't need to be just perfect. There's no such thing. This is a good sized tree. I think I want to place it closer to the front of my composition. But what do you guys think about back here? What do you think? Hey, yeah, some of you guys like that, huh? Good point. I guess it could go anywhere. So I'm just going to choose 
the front for now, but it could have gone somewhere else, right? I'm going to put it on the bottom so it looks like it's just right in front. When we lose perspective, we think inside of a scene, then the big stuff is in the front and the little stuff is in the back. So I'm actually just going to use this scrap again. See where I got my tree out. And I think I'll just tear up the other side. Kind of make me a little tree. The little tree will be more in the back. I can even add it hiding behind this big one. Yeah, I actually like that overlap. So you see why we didn't glue the land all the way down. What did it allow us to do? What can we do by not gluing it all the way down? Yeah, we could overlap it. We could overlap it. So I think I want one more tree and I have some more scraps here and I don't like to waste waste not want not right waste not want not I'm sure you guys have heard that from someone wiser than me so I can have like a medium tree maybe would this be a good spot Ooh, what about a little closer to the water sure sure get a little closer to the water no problem it's really whatever you want for your composition so now we just have some dark trees they're black on black kind of adding a sense of depth maybe a mystery to our art and it's time to create the Big Dipper. So I will have plenty of images for you guys to see this constellation, the Big Dipper. But most of you kind of know what it looks like, right? It's a, co a co collection of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars. So I'm going to use white. I, I would encourage you use white or light yellow, some color that really stands out for you. And let's create a nice little dipper here. So we'll do one, higher, two, three, four, five, six. Aww, my tree is blocking my dipper. I'm going to undo this. You know, the cool thing about not adding a ton of glue is also you can easily undo things. So keep that in mind, artists. As you see things that you like and don't like, you never want to go super heavy on the glue because it doesn't allow you flexibility. But I think that's a pretty cool dipper. So I'm going to use a sharpened pencil. Let me put my glue away the right way. Or a pen. Really whatever you have. A pencil or pen will work just fine. And just poke holes into our art. Some nice round holes. Hold the back of your paper, or else the hole may rip really big. You see how this one kind of ripped a little extra? It's because I wasn't holding the back very well. This is a critical stage, y'all. If you start putting giant holes in your paper, you're going to take away from the work that you've already done. And our supplies are limited, so take it easy poking your holes. Once you've poked your holes in, let's take a look at the string. Not bad. See a lot of strings on this string. For me, I'm just going to take maybe one of these strings. You do what you want to do. Some of you are going to have finer string. Some of you are going to have thicker string. If you're in school, I've already cut some string for you. So you just choose. You want to split the string or just use it. It's up to you. I'm going to take a nice long piece so I can put my string to the side. And I'm going to start in the handle of the dipper. I wet my finger just a tiny bit. And oh, I can't poke it through very well. Art secrets. You could use a pen or pencil. It doesn't matter which one. And you can use the front of it just to poke it through. I want to pull it all the way through. Very nice. I have this nice tail left. And this tail is going to be my running stitch. Uh huh. I'm holding the back. Take a look. I'm going to hold the back just so it doesn't rip my paper apart. And I want to pull this almost all the way through so I don't have a giant tail to worry about. 
holding your paper and taking your time is so important, artists. If you don't hold your paper and take your time, you're just going to end up ripping it. Slow down. So I'm going to turn it over on its back. Take this nice little string or yarn, whatever you have, and I'm going to put it through this stitch. This is the next one. Make sure it's not coming in the corner of your paper. Let me see that. Now you may have noticed that we're missing parts of the dipper, right? So we're going to be doing a technique called back stitching. So once you have one in and down and back around, all the way back, we have to go backwards. So I'm going to take it back inside this hole. So every time you go one hole forward, you pull it all the way through to the opposite side. Pull it all the way through. And it's going to give you both spaces filled in. If you don't do it that way, you're going to have a lot of missing spaces in your constellation. So now I go forward again. Because, right, I want to bring my yarn up to the front. This time I was able to use my finger. And I'm going to take it back again. So as you weave with me, I want to make sure that you're doing one forward all the way through. And then you can take it back. And flip your paper, guys. Don't just do this from the front. Hold the paper down where the holes are easily torn. There's no hard pulling for this. This is an easy pull assignment. Ah, I've tangled my string a little. Let me get that back together. There it is. Okay. So now I have the first part of the dipper. That's the, the arm of this ladle. It's in the back. Where do you think I'm going to go with it? Aha, I'm going to go directly to the next stitch. You guys got it. You guys figured it out already. Because I want it to go just like the dipper looks. I got my side here. Push this through gently. Now I'm going to move it forward. Keeping in mind, I'm just going to have to go back, right? So I'm going to move it forward, but this is a back stitch technique. If you keep making a running stitch, which is just when you go in, out, in, out, you're going to have big old gaps. And you don't want those. So now that I'm back here to the front, I can go right back to this hole where I'm missing some string. I just use my pin right there, make that a little easy on myself. Okay. Next I'll be back in the back and I'm going to go right up here. Because that's what's next. If you don't do it in that exact order, it'll be just fine. As long as you fill in these spaces. Use my pencil, my pen rather, push it through. And front. And down. through. It looks pretty decent in the front. If it looks crazy in the back, why are you worried about that? Nobody can see the back but you. It's your secret. Remember, looking neat in the front may be covering up something crazy in the back, but that's art magic. Nobody knows what the back of your art looks like but you. And those that you choose to share it with. Everybody else just sees the front. Hey. So I have some decent looking stitches there. Now you have two choices. You can either tie this together or just tape it down or glue it down. So 
Mine are kind of short. Mm. I don't know if I can tie it together. I'm going to tie mine together. And I need to cut a longer piece of string for each one of you. I don't want you to trouble yourself with a tiny knot. Those of you that can't make a knot yet, we need to have a knot class for one. And for two, you can use glue stick or tape to hold this in place. And I may just give your specials teacher some tape. And that way they can just put a nice dot of tape right on top of where you need it to stick. Okay? So we have our dipper, we have our nighttime scene. I can add a little extra color around these stars if I choose to to make them shiny. I think I would need a better crayon if I really wanted them to gleam. I'll peel back my crayon a bit. Put rid of some of that old paper. Okay. On my example, I did this part first. I made the dots really big first. It definitely was a smarter way to do it because this just stresses out my little holes on my paper. So I would recommend making those shiny first. So now we need some humans in search of reclaiming their humanity, their freedom. So we're going to have some folks. The folks have been hiding in these trees all night waiting for the perfect opportunity to come from the forest to cross the river and to make it safely to the other side where they have an opportunity to live full lives so in order to make this human i'm going to go to the edge of one of my trees it could be this tree it could be that tree any tree you want and i'm going to make a half circle fill in my half circle this is a person's shoulders. And I'm going to make another circle on top. Fill it in too. This is a person's face. I'm going to put a horizontal line and a small half circle. That'll be the person's hat at this time in history. Most people wore hats and it made a lot of sense. Keep you safe from sunshine, a little drier in the rain. Switch up markers, get a little darker for you. There we go. And I'm going to give them one finger pointed up. So there's a straight line. There's a little ball at the end of the line. And then I just make it a little thicker so it's like a hand. Because they are pointing to that constellation, which will point them north. And at this time in our country, in many northern states, as opposed to many southern states, all people had a chance to participate in the American dream. So there were more opportunities there. This is your freedom scene. This is the other one that I made, it has slightly thicker yarn. So we're going to have differences, but all together, I can't wait to see what you do. I'll see you next time, amazing artists.